Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, Latif, what's up, my brother? It's me, Tommy. You know, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for writing these books. Thank you so much for these video vlogs, man. I learned a lot from them. You know, you inspire me in every which way I can think of. Um, It's always a pleasure of being part of your group, Freestyle Against Phonies. I try to bring awareness out there for that. Um, But, you know, thank you for doing cool things and... You know, I'm looking forward to the next thing that you bring out. So, with in closing, man, thank you, my brother. And always remember, freestyle for life. Oh, man. Tommy, thank you, my brother. I really appreciate that. That, uh... That took me by surprise, man. I really appreciate it. Um, Tommy, a lot of you guys see him on social media under Thomas Field. Um, He's been a huge, huge fan turned friend, huge supporter. Um, I mean, he he buys my books. He's purchased my T-shirts. He binges on my vlogs. Um, Now he's a a fan of the podcast. I mean, really... um, uh, you know, I just, I need more Tommies, <laughs> you know, so, man, cool brother, if you guys see him, man, and, you know, big supporter of the genre, he don't take no shit when it comes to phonies, he's really true, big dude too, yo, so, <laughs> you know, but he's mad cool, yo, Tommy, man, big shout out to you, brother, I appreciate it, um, so anyway, um, oh by, by the way, if anybody uh, would like to call in, uh, really call in with any questions, um, the Anchor app has a button that says message. You click that. You have to make sure you go onto the um, Anchor app, click uh, search uh, Good Night Freestyle. When that page comes up, there's going to be a button right in the middle. I believe it's in the middle of, uh, of, the, of the photo, of the little cover image. Um, of Good Night Freestyle and just click the message button and you can leave me a message. Uh, ask me a question, give me a shout out, <laughs> whatever. No, the questions are cool because they kind of give me uh, stuff to uh, to talk about. You know, I really, I'm, I'm really interested to, to see if there's anything I can help you guys out with. Are there any questions that I can answer? Um, if there's something that I don't know, trust me, I'll find out, I'll figure it out. Um, it's very rare I'm going to tell you that I can't find out. I'll figure it out one way or the other. But I know enough people, so even if I'm not 100% sure, I can always uh, get that information. Um, so um, anyway, uh, let me recap on last night's uh, podcast, uh, which I had a lot of listeners, a lot of people t- uh, tuned in. Man, big shout out. I really appreciate it. It makes me feel better. I think I'm going to you know, start talking a little more confident and not babble as much. And I I really want to try to see if I can bring some sort of value to you guys and and maybe deliver something that can help you, whether it's going to help you in your career, if you're in the the market um, or in life. I'm I'm not a young dude. Uh, I just turned 53. So I got a little experience, you know. So if there's anything that I can help you guys out with, and at the same time, it might be helping me because trust me, I am far, far, far far, far from perfect. But um, uh, I try to do my best to keep everything on the straight and narrow. Um, Recap of last night's uh, podcast as far as the culprits uh, and uh, their intentions to take down our group Freestyle Against Phonies. So this was the word. So Apparently, I saw I saw the post. I must have had about more than a dozen people messaged me the post that was going around. I mean, like throughout the freestyle community, um, 
I have it somewhere here. I, I didn't pull it. I didn't think about uh, reading it. Uh, but basically, uh, what it was saying was they need this person needed 1,000 signatures, I guess, signatures, uh, in order to shut down the page. 1,000 signatures. And then he says something about you have to mark it as hate speech. So, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, really, hate speech. So, uh, it was just nuts. So, word has it that he was able to get six people. That six people uh, joined in, joined his uh, his rally and uh, signed up. And I guess marked us for hate speech. I haven't gotten any notifications or anything yet. To be honest, I kind of feel bad for the dude, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. So your goal was a thousand people and you got six. All right. I'm, I'm pretty sure he signed. So he really got five. He probably got his spouse to sign, maybe his siblings. So, I mean, how many outsiders really signed that thing? I mean, I really, I, I feel so bad. I, I'm ready to sign for him too. So, but anyway, uh, that's what's happening. I mean, I, I still listen. We're not out of the woods yet. We don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not try. I'm not reading the guidelines. I don't know the rules to shut the page down. I, I just, I'm just not gonna lose sleep over it. You know what I mean? It's not like I built the shit. It's not like I had a hammer and nails and I built this and it took me months to build. I could build a group in. I can hold my breath and build another group and I can market it basically in one day. I I, I know what to do. So, uh, you know, um, and I, and so anyway, it's just a shame that people would spend so much time and energy. Listen, this is my thing. Spend your time building yourself, not trying to knock down others. It's very simple, very simple, you know, um, but anyway, so to move on, I wanted to talk about something that came up in one of the posts today. Um, it was pretty interesting and it was so crazy because this came up a while ago. This came up a while ago. I'm talking about years ago. And I really listened closely to it. And this is in regards to who, you know, the so-called. I don't want to diss them because they take it personal. Um, But it's the so-called B-list acts. And when we say B-list, we're just talking about the acts that are not on these regular shows. You could call them the new school acts. You could call them the new generation. You could call them, what's what's the other phrase that they were using? Second to none? Or, I I forgot, in a class by itself. I, I I don't remember. But anyway... The reason why I use B-List, and I'll tell you, let me back up a little bit. I created um, um, a project a while ago. I don't know how many of you guys would even remember this. It was called The Magnificent B-List. Okay? It was dope. I made it very classy. The logo was a, it was like an old English letter B with like a purple, which represented royalty in the background. It was really, really dope. Now, that was the logo. Now, anyone who has followed me over the years know I love innovating. I love doing new shit. I love the fact I was the first one to write books. I love the fact I was the first one to put out a cologne. Um, I, I, I did SAL. SAL was a package, for those who don't know, of three artists. SAL. Little Susie. Angel, OCG, and Lizette Melendez, okay? That was a concept that nobody thought was going to work. To this day, they are constantly, constantly being requested. We just can't do those shows right now because our individual prices have changed and I now have the original cover girls together and uh, it's just, it's a whole different way. It was an incredible package. So I love doing these innovative uh, things I love to do the marketing for them. If I'm excited, I'll put some money behind it, try to push it. Um, I have enough connections and so on. But let me back up and try to explain to you guys 
my intentions of the Magnificent B list. Now, I've never spoken about this. I wanted to do a vlog about it, um, but I didn't. I, I, I think the, the podcast is probably a better way of talking about it, you know? So this is how the Magnificent B list came together. Excuse my pauses. I'm drinking water. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. There was a big debate online years ago. God, can I say eight years ago, maybe? Seven years ago? It's a big debate. And this was the the debate, the, the debate, okay? Some of the acts are not on the regular shows. I'm talking about like the Alan Becks and the Bobby D's and the regulars, you know? <clears throat> um, they made a they made a statement, and I really listened to the statement. In fact, no, actually, it wasn't a post online. It was a radio interview that I listened in on. I forgot which one. Somebody's probably going to remember this, okay? Um, And what they were doing is they were asking people, they were talking about the B-list artists or the new school artists, whatever you want to call them. And what they were saying was, Somebody from that camp, from the from that category. I'm trying to say it without dissing anybody. I'm not. I have a lot of respect for them, so I'm not dissing them at all. But anyway, <clears throat> somebody said, if we had the same opportunities as the Cover Girls or the George Lamonts or the Stevie Beats, if they had the same opportunity and they had the same people, you know, trying to get them shows. And putting them on the same stages that they would be able to dominate. And that they feel that they would probably wipe out all of the A-list acts. That's how good they were. Now, a lot of people laughed at that. I didn't. I didn't laugh at all. In fact, I, I, I really took it to heart. And I remember talking to my wife about it. She's always the first one to know everything that's going on with me. So... So I went to her and I explained to her what was going on. Now, she's a big cheerleader of everyone. Anybody who doesn't know her doesn't realize this, but she is. Um, she'll be the first one to, you know, try to help somebody else if she can. People, who, for some reason, don't get that from her. I don't know. But anyway, what I'm trying to get to is, <clears throat> so I explained to her and I said, well, I told her about the, in- the interview I listened to. And I told her that they said that they can probably, you know, wipe out the A-list artists if they had the same opportunity. Now, mind you, not only do I manage a couple of acts, Lil Susie and the Cover Girls, I am a booking agent. That is my primary bread and butter for over 25 years. I've worked with every single A-list act you can think of, and a lot of the B-list acts, well, some of the B-list acts, or some of the, you know, uh, less popular acts, and I've had them all over the country. So I know a lot of these promoters. I know what markets work well for who. I know who's good. I know who's okay. I know why some people get booked more than others. I, I got this. I, I know it. So I thought about it. I said, well, I said, I'm one of the main ones to get these the A-list acts on these platforms and with this and the same way I did it with them I can probably do it with these other acts but I had to be a little bit more creative I knew that and again I'm not trying to diss anybody please don't take it this way because I have to be open and transparent in order for it to come across the right way okay so I knew I could not take a B-list act. Mind you, I want you guys to please understand this. Promoters are not in the business of giving you exposure. They're not in the business of promoting your career. Promoters are in the business of packing their clubs or venues, and that is it. Okay? So they don't care. I'll be real. The amount of numbers and the amount of people that you can pull into their venue is more important than how great you can sing. It's more important than how great you can dance. Okay? K 
keep that if you keep this in mind you understand why everything the way it, it, it is and and this <clears throat> they don't see the value they don't see the value if there's a 500 or you got to realize most of the venues are you know smaller ones anywhere from 500 maybe 800 people a decent sized one is maybe fifteen <clears throat> hundred to two thousand people, and then you have the amphitheaters, which is like three thousand, thirty five hundred, and of course uh, the arenas, which you know those things go whatever six thousand, sixty five hundred on up. Okay, so let's say for a club, six hundred people. Okay, I know, I know just through experience who can pack that six hundred capacity very easy and who can't and sometimes it's not always the same acts it has to do also with the markets okay not every artist work works well in every market they don't there's a lot of markets that you know stevie b can't work that well cover girls can't work that well Susie can't work that well tk can't work that well there's Everybody has their market. Some can cross over. I'm fortunate my girls actually can do a lot between Miami and Maui. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm fortunate about that. But there's a lot of acts that can't do that. All right? So it's not always, you know, how great you are. Same thing with, you know, with certain genres, with certain markets, with the B-list. That's why you might have certain acts that can go to Chicago. Certain acts can go to certain parts of Texas. Not all parts of Texas, certain parts. A lot of them cannot go to the to Southern California, to the Los Angeles area. Some of them can make it to the Bay Area, up in the San Francisco, San Jose area. New York, Yeah. A lot of them can make it, can thrive in that whole tri-state area because this is where they came from. So that makes sense. Some of them can also make it in the Florida area, okay? But then you go into places like New Mexico and Arizona and Detroit, can't do it. It's It's a difficult market. So I came up with an idea where instead of trying to market the artist individually on the B-list. What I would do is I would create almost like a buffet. This was my idea. Almost like a buffet with a, with a menu, okay? And I would bring all these artists on board. Now, mind you, I did not sign anybody. I volunteered to help these acts absolutely free. Now, I would have made a booking fee, but it would have been off the bulk, which means they would have each lost maybe a half a percent, like nothing. My intentions were not to make money from them. However, my time is valuable. So even if it had to do with phone calls or paperwork or contracts, you know, and, they, and plus I was going to hire a road manager <clears throat> and I was going to hire dancers. And these will be the same road manager and the same dancers for the whole package. So this was the idea. I would sign, let's say, 20 acts, okay? Um, They would come in and they would be a part of the Magnificent B-List. Now, what we would do is we, I encouraged everybody to put videos on their Facebook pages, to put their bios, to put all their pictures. And then what I did is I did an e-blast that had links on it. This was, it was mad cool. Anybody who knows, I have a tremendous mailing list. I think at that time, my mailing list was like 97,000 people. It was huge. It dropped a lot now, but I'm rebuilding it it's just because as time goes on, people, you know, they, they don't use those emails anymore, so they change them. So in time, they went down, and of course, I have to go in and clean all the ones that are, are dormant. So anyway, so this was the idea. So the idea was I would do these e-blasts, which I did. And I would promote them as a, as a whole. And I created this entire story. I, what I did is, and I called them the Magnificent B-List. I mean, it's like when you hear, the, when you hear it alone, I, it's, kind, it's dope. I think it was dope. And what, what, what would happen is I had different prices. So they can go in, they could pull in 5X, 10X, 15X, 
15 X. Okay. <clears throat> the X, because most of these artists didn't have a lot of hit records. You can't go up there and try to perform every song you ever recorded. You can't do that. You got to find the two or three songs, maybe two, worst case one. So let's say two songs each. That is, that's a really good player that people really, really enjoying, you know, <clears throat> and what we would do is we would create almost like a medley kind of performance. All right. So I had a, a road manager set up. Um, I had a DJ set up people to do the show tapes. I mean, everything was, was in place, ready to go. And I was already marketing this thing. And what the promoters would do is they would come in, they would see this menu and they would just like if they're, you know, ordering food, I'll get a number three, a number four, a number seven, a number six, a number four, a number two. See, at this point, it didn't matter what market they went into because they weren't going in there alone, which was also my concept for SAL. Susie did great in certain markets. Angel did great in certain, certain markets. Lizette did great in certain markets. But when I put them together, I was able to clean up the whole country. It was genius. And the girls made, a more, made so much money. They were way up there, one of the highest paid, okay? And I'm still getting calls for them today. In fact, right before Christmas, I got a big call for them, but I can't do it. Anyway, so, <clears throat> so what the promoters would do is they would come in and they would pick this package, whatever the package is that they want. I would contract it. I would collect deposits. I would send a road manager. I will not be road managing them. Send a road manager. They do the entire, they do a soundtrack. They do the performance. Everybody gets paid. And we go to the next one. Now, what we did is, I wasn't trying to keep it where they had to contact me. I created links on that e-blast that went directly to each one of those artists' Facebook pages. Okay, so that way those promoters can actually go in there and take a look at them. So now every artist was responsible for their own page. I was like, go in there, make your page look dope. Don't put up no bullshit videos or some. Don't do that. Make it look dope because I'm sending people to go in to check you out. If they like what they see, they're going to come in and they're going to add you to their order. Okay, so it was a great, great concept. All right. And what happens is a lot of times if one package went out there and it did really well, there's a good chance that other people are going to want that same exact package. So it, 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 it forced everyone up to up their game, everyone else to up their game. Okay. Cause it was like, okay, listen, if <clears throat> there becomes a slot, if they pull somebody, they say, well, I, I kind of don't want number three anymore. Can we put number seven in there? If number seven gets in there, and I'm just using numbers as the name of artists. If number seven gets placed into that lineup and we ship them out, they better rock the house. So that way that becomes the new situation because we want to film it. We want to put it online, let people see what this look like. Okay. So what I was doing is I was doing exactly what this person was asking. I was putting them on the same exact stages and marketing them to the same exact promoters that I market everybody else to. And it would have killed it. It would have killed it. Now, this is what was happening. One by one. And I know who was responsible for it. I don't hate on him. I understand. But I see where he's at, what he's doing, and I see where I'm at and what I'm doing. So a lot of times people don't screw up because of their talent in their this business. It's because of their attitude. And I think everyone can come up with somebody who you know, who's probably an incredible talent, but they get no play and they get no respect because their attitude sucks. Okay? So keep that in mind. Talent can be dealt with. If you're a great singer and I'm a bad singer, but people like me, trust me, people will work with me and try to help me to know how to, to sing just so they could, because they'd rather work with me than work with you. Okay. So <clears throat> attitude plays a big role. Okay. The superstars, if you look at the superstars that are out there, a lot of people say shit about Stevie B. Okay. But Stevie knows how to play his game. You know, it comes across like this and that online. That's one thing, but I've, been, I've done a lot of business with Stevie over the years, and I've been behind the scenes with him dealing with promoters. Very, very professional. And he knows how to, and they like him. People like him. The promoters like him, and he makes them their money. Okay? 
Same thing with us. Same thing with a lot of the George Lamonts, the Quarles, the Shannons. These are some really great people and the promoters love working with them. Now, so someone spoke up and they said, well, listen, this is the problem. I don't consider myself a B-list artist. See, this was the thing. They got insulted by the title I used. And I got to be real with you. A lot of them weren't even B-list. A lot of them maybe was C, D, maybe even E-list. B-list was a compliment. But it sound cool, though. And the logo sound cool. And so <clears throat> this person had quite a bit of influence. And he ended up, and I know because I had the moles coming in and they were telling me what was going on. And a few of them tried to hang in there, but little by little, I was getting emails, people were dropping out. And all I kept thinking to myself is like, how bad are they screwing themselves up? They're making a horrible decision. Okay, because I know this was a dope idea. Even my promoters, I, I started already pushing this towards my promoters. They didn't get it at first, but as I continued and continued, now check this out. As we got to the end, there was only maybe three or four left. I'm sorry. I couldn't do anything with them. I felt so fucking bad, man. I really felt, I felt horrible. Like I had to, this was the first time I started a project I had to pull out, but it was because I had to rely on other people, you know? If I sit down to write a book, I start with Once Upon a Time and I say the end. I finished the book, I pushed through. But I couldn't push through with this project because the people that I was trying to help took it as though I was dissing them. They totally took it wrong, you know? I wasn't mad, I kind of was like, wow, you know, another poor decision, they, they're not thinking. Listen, this is the deal, you know, a lot of companies went out there when, when you know, we had computers. Remember Commodore was like one of, one of the first ones and then IBM came and they took over. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, b list and those second stringers have the opportunity to, to grab the market. This was such a great opportunity. These artists now had the platform to go out there, rock the house. And this was the deal. There was no exclusivity. And, and I asked them, I gave them an option. I said, if I get a promoter that really, really digs you and they want to book you solo for another gig, can I represent you on that gig? Now, mind you, these acts, no matter what, were not going to make a lot of money in the beginning. The amount of money that I would have been selling the entire package was probably less than what I get for the cover girls by themselves. Okay? So, and I make a... a a measly 10% commission on a regular book if I don't manage the act and I wasn't planning on managing the act. I kind of just wanted to put them on the platform and then send them on their merry way and hopefully maybe, you know, they would have been busy and, 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 and it, it would have took off and it would have been a wonderful thing but they looked at it as though, and, and trust me, when they, would, when they were bowing out, they didn't bow out gracefully. A lot of them bowed out with a bit of an insult like, like I did something bad to them, like I, like, I, like I dissed them. I never dissed them. That was never my intentions. It was a marketing ploy that I knew was going to work. And let me tell you this. Once I canned the whole package, I went online. I pulled down every logo I can find. I still got the logo somewhere. You could probably even Google the Magnificent B-List and find it. It's probably on there because I did a lot of marketing. I had the SEO ranking on Google and everything. I put money on the ads. It was crazy. So, but this was the craziness, man. I promoted that shit so hard in such a short period of time that when that thing canned, all of a sudden, I started getting, I started getting calls for them. Okay. At San Antonio was the first one. San Antonio, Texas was the first one place to call me and they were the first ones that I started that I hit hard they were like one of the first ones because I was so active with this promoter and I was so excited about the project and if I'm excited I can sell the shit out of it so he was one of the first ones that I went to him. I told him and it's Ruben Reyes you know from Royal Nation and I told Ruben I said yo Ruben man trust me what I'm telling you this is like buying stocks at you know penny stocks this shit's gonna blow up get on board now you know we can market it I have this great idea it's going to be an entire night of a freestyle. It's going to be dope. We're going to do it at this price. It's going to, and 
And in the beginning, he wasn't biting. Towards the end, so much promotion, so much hearing me pitch it. Finally, he says, yo, la, man, send me that list. I said, what list? He goes, that Magnificent B list. I said, oh, 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 man. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to do it. So I was like, oh, shit. And then I believe it was James Rios from Austin called me. And then um, one of the dudes in Dallas that worked at KNON, oh, my God, I forgot his name, contacted me about it. Um, um, Hassan from uh, the Bay Area, um, we, we, we talked about it. He thought it was a great idea. Um, Louis Pinto from uh, Rhode Island thought it was a great idea. I remember bringing it up to him. I mean, I started getting a lot of promoters started calling to inquire. What they wanted was they wanted more information. Hey, listen, trust me. If you're going to ask me for more information, I'm going to sell that shit to you. Okay? So, but anyway, so that was the story with the Magnificent B-List. I still think it's an incredible incredible idea the only probably drawback is the artists are a little older right now you know back then the artists were like early 40s now they're like early 50s it's like so you know so it doesn't i don't know so the impact is gonna be a little different at this point i mean i couldn't get involved with it again um i would like to see it you know something like that be put together you know it would have worked but I don't think anybody would have looked at it the way I did. Nobody would have sold it or have the big idea, you know, and, and there's a lot of greedy people. There's a lot of thieves out there and it was, it would have been all for them. Anybody who, who knows me, who has worked with me knows that that's just not my, I don't, I don't, I don't roll like that. That's just not my thing. You know, I have a great, great, great um, reputation with the artists and, and the, and the promoters. I'm not a greedy, not a greedy dude. I sell, I'm a salesman. I'm going to sell the shit out of you. You know, um, but I'm not going to steal from you. And um, <clears throat> and that's that's what's going to happen with a lot of these artists. If they if somebody came in and, and did something like that, they're going to run into it's, it's going to be rough. So anyway, but um, anyway, so that's what happened with that. And uh, so somebody brought that up today again. And uh, I just want to tell that story. I just thought it was really great. You know, so. So but anyway. That's it for tonight. Um, this is episode number six, right? Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you guys really tune into this one and give me some numbers and uh, send me some messages. Ask me a question or two. One, I really want to add it, add it, try to add at least one question to every podcast if I could. Um, if the question is, if it's a good question, if it's a stupid question, sorry, I'm not putting it on. But, um, you know, think about it. Think about it. If it's something you need to know and I can answer, I'll be more than happy uh, to answer it. So, but anyway, um, thanks again. I appreciate you. And good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.